Can you hear the birds? They're going crazy. <laughs> Hello, it's nice to see you again. If you're new, welcome. I'm Noreen Burke, owner of Call Clutter Fairy Home Organizing, and this is my YouTube channel, The Crafty Organizer. I'm loving the birds. It's super early this morning. Uh, I'm a little bit late getting this to you today, but I am loving the songs outside of my door. Anyway, I found this Kirkland plant stand that I thought was cool. I was looking for something to display plants a little bit better, but when I saw this, I knew that I could duplicate it for a fraction of the price. And I could also make it so that you can convert it into storage. So let's get going. This was the plant stand that I saw. I knew that I could turn this into something that would be more suited for storage as well as display. So I went to my local dollar store and I got four mops, but you could get brooms. I got three of these cookie trays, one plastic tray that was the same size, some glue, some zip ties, these little buckets that matched what the inspiration was, and then a little snack to keep me going. So here were some of the trays that I had, and this rectangle one was perfect. They have a more affordable bucket, they have a three pack, but this broom cleaning section is where I really got excited because you can save a lot of time prepping and painting by either buying black handles or getting the white handles. So as you're looking in this cleaning section, they have a new thing where you can buy the broom attachment to the handle. So if you want black handles, they are ready to go and these will be a lot easier than trying to spray paint the whole thing. Or if you like the white look like I did, you can get the white handles. So the thing about these that I like is they just screw off and I'm going to keep these mop heads for a different project so worry not, they won't go to waste. And then the handle, literally the top just pulls off. So I went ahead and propped all four handles and I'll save these items that I'm taking off for a future craft. Once that was done, I started prepping them. So the area where it has the screw head is just going to act as the feet and the hollow top is what we're going to start working on. So get something that's safe to hammer upon, but gently hammer the top that's hollow to flatten it. And these are super pliable. So what I like about these is they're strong enough that you can't bend them, but if you really gave it a good hard press, you could tweak them. Now, if you don't want a hammer, you could take a pair of pliers and just gently keep squeezing until you have that top flattened. The next step we're gonna do is get a larger size nail and we're going to hammer a hole into the top and I'd go about three quarters of an inch down. This is a soft aluminum so this isn't hard to do. So hammer that hole all the way through. You're going to do this to all four of the legs and make sure you're lining them up in the same place because ultimately these are going to become the legs so those holes need to line up. I found that the paint did pop off on a couple of these, which at the top, no one's going to notice. So don't worry about that too much if that happens to yours. Now, you can get some jewelry wire, some planting wire. You can get zip ties that you've already had. You can get those twist ties from bags when you're at the grocery store. But you're going to feed these through the top a couple of times and just loop it so that these two legs are resting on top of each other where the flattened part is and this becomes your legs. I had a zip tie there just to hold it in place but you can also zip tie it just to make sure it stays together. So I'm going to do the same thing with the second one. I am just feeding that wire through the hole a couple of times so that it is secured together. Now this is not a pivotal part of the structure, it's just to keep the legs together. And now you can almost see where this might start forming together. So these are the legs and the cookie sheet is going to become one of the shelves. I knew I wanted this graduated so I start bending these cookie trays and with a, something metal or strong you can see that they bend really easily. 
So I'm going to do the next one slightly smaller so that I'll have three sizes. I'm going to have a really narrow one, a medium length, and then the full length of what the cookie drying sheet or the cookie cooling sheet offers. So here you'll be able to see all three sizes. Next I'm going to start feeding these through. You'll do the smallest one first because that'll be the top tier, then the medium size, and then the bottom goes obviously last. These form the three shelves that I'll be able to put my decorative items on, or I can use this for functional storage. I'm going to feed the legs through the top. Now I have to confess, doing this alone was a little bit of a balancing act, so if you have someone to help you, or if you have a stack of books that can help balance this up, that would be a lot easier. The next thing I'm going to do is measure on the bar where I want these shelves. And you'll want to make sure that this measurement matches all four of the legs, obviously, so that everything is even. And then what I do is just take a zip tie and secure through the cookie cooling sheet to the broom handle so that it is locked into place. I'm not worrying about if these are level yet. I'm just making sure that I've got a mark that I can easily see so that they're spaced out evenly. So I'm going down to the second one. I went about 10 inches for each one, but this is so customizable, you can do it to whatever height you want. You can even do this so that all of the cookie trays are the same length, so that the length is even on all three shelves. They would just have to go through the holes at different intervals so that this still graduates with the legs. So now you can see what it looks like. So the bent up part is the back. And I'm gonna pan around here. This is what the front would look like. And that tray is going to go up at the top so right now I only have one zip tie on each corner, but it is just holding that tray to the leg. And here's what a snippet of what the finished result will look like. Right now I just have clips, binder clips, holding that top on, but I'm going to apply some paint and chalkboard to it in just a second. So now I'm getting my level and I want to make sure my little shelves are completely level before I go to the next step. So I'm just sliding the zip ties up or down where I need to to make sure that these shelves will be level before I do the next step, which is gluing these zip ties in place. Run a bead of glue all around the zip tie and add a second zip tie going the opposite direction so it's forming a little X. So here's where I get to cheat. <laughs> I know that you guys don't have these lying around, but maybe you do. I collect wheels. Whenever I take something apart and it has wheels, I grab them. But how many of you have these rolling carts in your home or you've seen them at thrift stores or in trash cans? The wheels pop right off, you guys. Grab those wheels. They are so useful for multiple projects. And in this case, all I did was drill at the teeniest, tiniest hole where that handle screwed off, and guess what? The little peg to these wheels pops right in. So I did that to all four legs, and now I have a movable storage cart or display cart. So the original measured 15 by 16 by 45 and a half, or 44 and a half. Mine is 12 by 16 and a half by 45. So I almost matched the exact measurements to the original, but here's mine. And I have my first customer for my little flower stand. I'm actually thrilled with this. It is so lightweight, but strong. I'm gonna show you in a second. I put multiple things on these shelves just to test it out, to see how else it could be utilized. Here I've got some craft supplies, and again, because it's on wheels, it's gonna be easy to move around. And the placard at the top, which is a chalkboard, is what really makes this a completely sturdy piece. 
And then lastly, I showed little snacks here. You guys, I am really proud of this. I almost wish I had done a second one so I could have done it in the same color, but I knew I wanted mine to be that farmhouse look. So you can do this in any color and style that you want, which I really love. And you can just wheel it wherever you want. And right now, Domino's jealous that I'm not wheeling him somewhere. <laughs> I'll take you for a walk later, buddy. Right now, here's the final resting place for it. It says weeds and kids grow fast here. And I'm going to use this as my little stand for the cactus gardens that I'm giving away. So here's the cost breakdown on this. It was right around $17 for the supplies, but you could make it less expensive by knocking off those milk duds and <laughs> bringing it to $16. I know my ideas are crazy sometimes, but what do you think? I am actually super excited about this one because I had so much fun walking around the Dollar Tree, which let's just really quickly say, I got to walk around the Dollar Tree. What a glorious thing I got to do. I stayed distance, I wore my mask, but it was so nice getting to go out. So looking through all of the items and trying to see how I could make this, I think my favorite moment was I was going to make these with the round rings so that the buckets can sit inside. And the Dollar Tree has those little flag stands that are affordable, so I was going to bend those into shape. But then it's exclusively just holding those little buckets and it can't be used really for anything else. When I saw those cooling sheets, I knew this is what I can do because then I have other functions and uses for this. And you know I love changing my mind about things and using them differently. So I can't wait to hear how you could potentially use this if you're excited about making one of these. And if you come across any websites or magazines with something you'd like to duplicate, go ahead and send it to me. My email is in the description below. I love these inspirations. I love tackling these new projects and finding ways for you to duplicate these looks on a budget. I will be taking a couple of days off, so I won't have another video up until Tuesday or Wednesday, but I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you then. Bye!